everyone welcome to the episode 2 of keysort tutorial series in this episode i'll be covering the user interface and the preferences which control the keysort 9 so let's open the keysort 9 so the first thing that we see in when we open keysort 9 is the welcome screen you can see various things here these are the recent scenes where i have worked and these are the demo scenes which are provided by key shot as an example and here you can see learning tutorials and the news related to the key shot so let's go to the preferences which i am going to cover first so the preferences are found in edit and preference so let's bring it here so the first thing that i'm going to do is change my theme that is light to dark so I am starting the explanation from the general. The first thing that you are seeing is a tick bar which shows that the show welcome window at startup. When we open Keyshot, the first thing that we see is the welcome screen. Welcome screen displays recent scene, demo scenes, news and other information. You can click on it to disable the welcome screen. The next one is the adjust aspect ratio to the backplate. Backplates are uh, the images which we sometimes use in background of our renderings instead of environment or studio. If it is left enabled, it uh, if uh, if it is left enabled, it automatically resizes the real time view to the same aspect ratio of any black plate image that is loaded into the real time view. And the next thing is auto update. Auto update is, uh, uh, you can say, a notification that Keyshot gives you when there is a new update. Next one is, uh, uh, you can see it says pause Keyshot when sending jobs to network rendering. You see two options here. The first one shows the time after which real time render will stop. And the next one is a sample. So you can select an amount of time or render samples to automatically pause the rendering in the real-time view and stop the usage of your CPU. Denoise uh, I will cover later in this course but you should know you can change the denoise time here. Next thing let's see. So Keyshot also allows you to take screenshots when you are actually working on your render. It is found in render and save screenshot. So let's see other options that we get general so there are options the first option is the format of your screenshot you can see there are various options you can choose anyone but if there is a uh, alpha channel involved or uh, you can see the transparency you should go for png and you can choose your quality from here now next few options are general uh, it allows uh, if you click on it it will also save the transparency and uh, this particular option uh, allows Keyshot to ask every time it saves the screenshot for the location. And next one is uh, save a camera with each screenshot. When you checked it, Keyshot will save a camera view for every screenshot that is saved. These views can be accessed from camera tab in the project window that you can see here. Save metadata with each screen with each screenshot. You can save metadata. I will tell you more about the metadata later in the course. And here you can decide the format. And this one is a default startup screen. A startup screen is a basically a scene that you get when we you actually open Keyshot. So default uh, is the startup.bip, which contains an environment and uh, other things or uh, lighting settings so you can change and put your own startup scene next is a backup revision when this particular revision manager is enabled keyshot will create a serialized backup every time that you save rather than overwriting the scene this result in a full copy of the original scene so you can see there is a option of five so let me tell you what is the meaning of this five it actually determines how many instances of the scene will be saved 
before the oldest one get overwrit overwritten. By default, the value is 5. When the scene is saved the sixth time, the first version will be actually overwritten. And the maximum value that you can take is the 99. Save reminder is, as the name says, it will remind you to save your data. And this one is for cloud library. You can clear the cache memory from here. And uh, other option, this one is quite important. Uh, all the don't so again kind of uh, notices that we that you will get in the key shot, you can enable or disable them from here. And the uh, network, this section uh, actually allows the user to configure the proxy settings in order to communicate with the Luxian server and the Keyshot Cloud library. This may be necessary when Keyshot is installed in environment with tight, uh, you know, firewall security. Other options include live linking. Uh, live linking is uh, used when Keyshot is connected to a modeling application via custom plugin. I will drop a link in the description from where you can download custom plugins from uh, for uh, any CAD tool, whether it is SolidWorks or anyone, any CAD tool you are using. When it is enabled, live linking is uh, can be used. Live linking allows you to run Keyshot in parallel with the supported 3D modeling software and update the geometry inside of Keyshot without losing any of the material assignments like camera and lighting. The next option that you see here is the scripting. It shows that the, uh, for the use of local Python paths that you can uh, click here. And the next one is a crash reporting, which you can click to send data to the Keyshot server. Let's go to the next one. This is the folder. You can decide the location for each folder, like where you want to save the textures, backplate, environments, and all of them. You can change them individually by clicking over here and you can edit them. And all the folders are available in C, Users, Documents and Keyshot. This is for the plugins. If you have any plugins installed, the custom plugins, you will see them here. You can activate or deactivate them from here. I will put up a link in the descriptions from where you can install the plugins. Next is a color management. Color management actually allows you to use your own color library uh, you can see here it is written there to compensate for the image gamma when applying for uh, library colors gamma actually corrects color values when applying them to a material directly from the color library this will try to keep the appearance of the color in the library when you select this option the color of the material in the real time view and the library will always match the next option that you see here is the hotkeys. Here you can see all the hotkeys for the various purposes that you will do, like tumble, pan, or everything you can see here. And one of the very good thing that you get in Keyshot is the hotset preset. If you are coming from any kind of software, uh, CAD software, you can apply their default setting in the soft in this Keyshot nine. Like if I use the SOLIDWORKS, I can just click on it and all the settings will, you know, change according to the SOLIDWORKS. The next thing that you see here, you can import your own settings for the hotkeys or export them or you can reset them. Next is the import settings. Import settings, the first option that you see is the file type. Here you can see what is the default file type you want to choose for the importing purpose. And uh, the next one is you can either choose open file or import file. In open file, all the, the file will be imported with a default option. But if you are choosing the import file, you can, you know, work out, work around with the environment or the file. So you can, I will be covering these options actually later because they contain things which I haven't covered yet. Let's go to the first one, which I have, we have seen first. The first one is a language which is common theme is dark, which I like actually, and the font size and other things. And uh, you can enable high DPI support, but it will take high computation power. And you can include camera changes in undo and redo, which is followed by control jet 
would undo. I will tell you about these options when we will cover them in further tutorials. You can you can you can limit the render output memory limit and all other options which are in material like UV gloss and roughness. I will tell you when I will be discussing the material nodes in details. So this was all about the preferences which is 